Well, good morning, everybody. Hope you're all doing well. I'm Deanna Palm, President and CEO of the Washington County Chamber of Commerce. This is one of our Small Business Solutions Series workshops. Um, thank you all for taking time. And we want to thank Heidi Sivers Boyce um, and her support with Hawthorne Farm Athletic Club of our Small Business Solutions Series workshops. Heidi, I'm going to turn it over to you for your morning inspiration for us. Oh, thank you so much. And we'll just, I have a real short video to roll here while we let the last few people um, join us. So I will let this go. Good morning, everybody. I'm Heidi Sivers Boyce, president of Hawthorne Farm Athletic Club. Our local and family owned independent business is proud to sponsor this Washington County Chamber Small Business Solution Series. Last week, I had the honor of hosting both the Chamber community and the Hillsborough Mayor at our beautiful campus located off Elam Young Parkway in Hillsborough near the airport, right across the street from the Washington County Chamber offices and near the Hawthorne Farm Max stop. Uh, for Hawthorne Farm Athletic Club, we originally imagined the theme of this event in the summer. It was going to be a uh, welcome back celebration of sort of return to normal. But as we all know, uh, conditions change and we came to believe or think of this event as a resilience tour of sorts. Recognition of the fact that we are still here, still standing and still moving forward right now is something worth acknowledging and celebrating that goes on a business level and on a professional level. Each of us here right now in this presentation today are still standing under some incredibly challenging conditions. My team and I at Hawthorne Farmers strive to use the intensity of the last year to strengthen our resolve to stay healthy. And we're passionate about sharing that resolve along with encouragement, support, community, resources, and of course, a healthy dose of fun with others, specifically other business leaders. As I always say, no business solution will last if you aren't taking care of yourself and the people behind it. Last Friday, I had the honor of connecting with a couple of different business leaders who shared with me their challenges, their exhaustion, their hardship. And this was shared with such strength and such wisdom. We really are a very tough and resilient community. And while there are those among us for whom going through tough times sort of naturally includes and easily includes physical exercise and all the benefits that come with it. For many of us, it doesn't. So for today's Wellness Minute, I just wanna offer a very simple reminder to not forget to move each day, be it a lot or a little. I know you likely hear this often, whether it's our doctor, our spouse, our parent, or our children telling us, or maybe it's some Harvard Business Review style article saying that one of the most consistent habits of successful entrepreneurs is regular physical activity. We know we need to care for our physical health, but sometimes we just need that simple, regular encouragement to start where we are and start today. So that is my simple message to you today. And if there is anything Hawthorne Farm Athletic Club could do to help you with that, please don't hesitate to reach out. We'd love to meet you in person, and we thank you. Thank you very much, Heidi. Um, yes, uh, Hawthorne Farm Athletic Club is right next door, practically, to the Washington County Chamber. And um, Heidi and I had a conversation at her Welcome Back event on Friday that, no, in fact, I will not get in better shape through simply through osmosis. So um, I am now resolved to the fact that it's going to take something more than that, and, and I have no excuse as well. So uh, thank you again for your support of our Small Business Solutions Series workshop. Now it is my pleasure to welcome and introduce Matt Craigie, who is the Economic Development Director for Washington County. Uh, Matt, I'm going to make you the co-host so you can share your slides. Um, I want to thank you for taking time out of what I know is a very busy schedule and a very busy time for you at Washington County to share with us. Um, give us an update on what's happening at Washington County um, and sort of what, what things look like as you're moving forward. Great. Thanks, Deanna. Uh, first off, Deanna, thank you for the uh, title promotion. My title is Economic Development Manager. So thank you for making me a big D director here. That's that's awesome. I'll contact uh, our HR department about uh, my pay raise on that one. 
Um, thanks everyone for uh, for giving me this opportunity to jump back in. I think I was trying to remember back the last time I connected with you all. Uh, I think it was very early in my tenure uh, here at the county. I'm, I'm now just about six months in and it's been kind of a crazy six months uh, for everyone, right? We're still in this pandemic. We're all uh, working hard to keep our businesses afloat. And here at the county, we're, we're trying to be thoughtful about supporting, supporting you all. So I just have a few slides here and I'll, I'll give you an update on what we're working on specifically around economic recovery. And then um, I'd like to open up to uh, a conversation about uh, how your business is doing today, um, you know, how uh, the pandemic continues to impact uh, the work that you're doing and, and what you're hoping for for the future and what you need to, to thrive and to grow right now. So um, I'm always happy to present to big crowds and to small crowds. Uh, you know, we, we have a smaller crowd today and that's great. So let's, let's turn this into a conversation as we're, as we're able to here. So let me uh, see if I can be successful with technology and share my screen today. Here we go. All right. Does everyone see a, my slides? All right. Get thumbs up there. Great. I just need to figure out how to make sure to see all of you. I think that's, there we go. Um, okay. So an update here. So again, um, I've been working on all sorts of things here over the past six months. Uh, as you might recall from the presentation I did, um, it was at March, I think. Uh, this position at the county is uh, is a new one. So um, some of the work um, to be done here is to help boot up the economic development program at the county. The county has done economic development a variety of different ways. Um, some of the county commissioners have uh, have a passion for economic development and have worked with you all. But this is the first time that the county has had this function as, uh, it's not a full department, but as uh, kind of a program at the county. So I've been spending a bunch of time uh, working on a work plan uh, for that and, and working with our local partners to, to think about our relationships with, uh, uh, with Hillsborough and Beaverton and the other cities uh, in terms of economic development. And so at some point, I'd love an opportunity to come back uh, with you all and talk about that work plan and talk about where we might take this program. Uh, for today, though, I want to talk about the thing that's taken up 75-80% of my time, which is um, economic recovery efforts. Uh, so trying to be uh, thoughtful and responsive to the economic downturn caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. There are multiple regional uh, and local efforts to help stabilize and support the economy. Um, there's, there's all sorts of grants. grants. I hope that uh, you all have been able to access and, and take advantage of some of the, the grants from the Small Business Administration and, and some of the other uh, federal government agencies. Uh, here at the county and in partnership with local cities and some of our regional partners like GPI, we're taking a strong look at some of the grants that are, that are available for local governments to help support the local economy. So the Economic Development Administration has a whole series of grants that they're rolling out here starting this fall that are uh, focused on um, workforce development and uh, entrepreneurship and all sorts of things. And so we're hoping to pull some of those federal dollars uh, into the region to help support uh, business uh, growth. Um, the American Rescue Plan, so ARPA, the American Rescue Plan is the primary uh, source of funding that we have to help support economic recovery. And um, you, you, you might have, uh, you might know all about this, but I'm gonna go through a little bit of a 101 here on the ARPA, um, uh, the American Rescue Plan Act. So. Um, almost all local governments, counties and cities uh, across the United States uh, through a portion of the ARPA funds, uh, the ARPA Act, will be receiving uh, an allocation um, for dollars that can be spent on the COVID-19 public health emergency and then also the, ec the associated economic impacts. Uh, two key pieces about those ARPA funds that are coming to local governments is one of them is that the dollars are uh, come out in two tranches. So there's there's a half of the allocation um, uh, came out th earlier this summer, and then the second uh, allocation, the second tranche, will be coming out next year. Uh, and I think that's a really uh, strategic design uh, by by the feds here because right now we are still very much focused on economic response and the public health emergency actually i should have put those in reverse order in my sentence it's we're really continuing to focus on the public health emergency first 
Um, and actually we have, be, because of that, we have few dollars that we can spend right now on economic recovery. Now, we all want this pandemic to go away and hopefully next year it will be, it will be hopefully it's gone actually, but uh, hopefully it's, it's uh, much, much less of a thing and we are able to spend more of the tranche $2 I'm hoping that we can spend more of those tranche two dollars on economic recovery and really start thinking about long-term strategy uh, with that. So I'm, I can talk a little bit about that in a second. Um, the second piece is that, um, you know, I haven't gotten too many uh, calls for folks saying uh, kind of harebrained ideas of how we can spend these dollars, uh, but, uh, but the, the dollars need to be spent uh, with uh, the, there needs to be a, a, a really tight nexus with um, either COVID-19, public health, the public health emergency, or economic impacts. So we 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 can't kind of spend these dollars on anything. There needs to be that really really strong nexus point. So yeah, nobody has asked for. I can't come up with a crazy example, but nobody's asked for too many crazy things there. But we have to be really thoughtful about that federal guidance. So the, at the county, um, we have, uh, in preparation for deploying these dollars and um, getting them out there to, um, to, to fight the pandemic and uh, help small businesses in particular survive, we've developed a framework to help guide the use of the own, our own allocation. So the framework is based in um, the values of equity, resilience, collaboration, and good governance. So how are we thoughtful about centering racial equity? How are we thinking forward for the next disaster with resilience? How are we being collaborative with our partners, both uh, in the public sector and in the private sector, local and regional? And then how are we being, uh, how are we doing this uh, with, uh, with good governance? So how are we, uh, these, these dollars, these are taxpayers' dollars that uh, should be going out into the, into the economy we're supporting the public health emergency. How are we doing that efficiently and to the most effect? Uh, principles, values, uh, pr principles are how we go about doing this work. And so you see some connections here, but this is to inform how we might put together some of these uh, programs. And so again, uh, thinking about racial equity first, centering that in our programs, public health first, uh, we are still very much in the pandemic. We're trying to think about leverage and trying to be innovative. Um, again, um, right, you know, innovative, proactive, and strategic. I have there. Again, right now, we're still, unfortunately, doing a lot of response work because we're still in the middle of it. The Delta variant um, uh, hopefully is now dissipating, but uh, it caused uh, quite the surge here over the past uh, month and a half. So. Um, so hopefully with, again, with tranche two, we can start looking forward a little bit more and start um, doing more economic recovery work um, instead of just responding to the needs of the day. So that's, that's just a little bit of a glimpse of uh, how we have um, set ourselves up to uh, thoughtfully deploy the county's ARPA allocation. So um, like I mentioned earlier, the tranche one funds were released in May of this year, and uh, we have um, organized a few teams at the county and have been working with local cities and others to think about how we uh, deploy those tranche one funds. I will say that only it's only about 10% of the funds uh, out of our tranche, the county's tranche one funds that we're able to spend on economic recovery. So again, the, the lion's share here is going to vaccination efforts and um, all of the, the wraparound supports that are need, needed with the public health emergency. And I think that's, that's very appropriate. Um, but I can talk a little bit about what we're able to do here with the tranche one economic recovery funds. Uh, we have broken uh, the economic recovery funds out of uh, out of tranche one into into three main buckets here, and it's really it's really two main buckets with a little little slice on the side here. Um, the the first the first bucket here is around small business recovery support, um, and so this is continuing some of the support for uh, the investments that the county and others made um, with the CARES Act of 2020. So. 
uh, funding the business recovery centers of which the Washington County uh, Chamber is, is one of uh, four across the county. Uh, we are looking to fund other community-based organizations to, to do technical assistance work. So helping small businesses with business planning, with marketing, with transitioning to a digital platform, work like that. Um, we're also considering uh, a, a capital lending tool. Um, and this is, this is something new, and this is something that we're going to be uh, we're going to go through a process this fall to figure out what that program might look like, how we might tailor that program, how we might deploy it. We're kind of roughly just calling it the Economic uh, Stabilization Fund right now, uh, and there will be an opportunity to, to, um, to, to connect with us and to work with us on what that might look like. So this is actually, I've got a slide here. I have the next slide. I've got questions for you, and I would love to hear about um, the, the kind of capital needs that your business needs at this point. So, so that's something we're um, trying to be uh, thoughtful about is, is capital needs and how we might pair that with this uh, technical assistance piece. Workforce development is the other uh, major bucket here. Um, in my six months uh, at the county, I've been trying to get out and talk with lots of businesses and lots of organizations like the Washington County Chamber to hear about what the challenges are of, of businesses and from, uh, from everyone from uh, Intel to, um, you know, I was talking to a, a print shop the other day, everyone from, you know, the, the largest, our largest traded sector partner to the, the smallest Main Street business, everyone has said workforce is on their mind. They can't find enough workers. Uh, so in the semiconductor industry and in our uh, silicon forest, um, partners have talked about, we, we could hire folks if they were out there, we could hire technicians, it's not just the PhDs, we need more help. And the local Main Street businesses are saying the same thing, we can't find even folks to be cashiers. Um, we, I, I'm fortunate that I live one mile away from uh, our children's elementary school, because we got a a call from the local school, school district on the second day of school, and they said, we are 86 bus drivers short. And so uh, your bus schedule, they weren't going to cut it, but they were going to pick our kids up at some absurdly uh, early time of day. And then they would just have to be standing in the, in the playground. Uh, with it. They were going to like line them up and make them stand there for 45 minutes. And I was like, okay, we're just going to, we're going to start walking to school, which actually was, it's been really nice for us, but it is uh, the, the challenge there. Uh, and I've heard that kind of across the board with um, the yeah, healthcare needing uh, CNAs and, and all school districts needing bus drivers all across. So we want to be, um, we're paying attention to that and want to think about ways that we can um, support the, the pipeline and support workers who have been unemployed, uh, help them with reskilling, help them with some of the wraparound supports. One, one bullet point here that I didn't add in here is childcare. Uh, we have a whole package of um, childcare programs that we're going to be rolling out uh, here uh, in partnership with our local, uh, with the local cities. Um, the tricky part about workforce, um, one of the tricky parts about workforce is that uh, there's, there's no light switch that we can flip and uh, we can, you know, there's, there's no magic wand that we can flip and, and, oh, look here, here's all these, um, you know, workers that are appropriately skilled for the job that, that you're looking for. Here you go. It's, it's ready to go. It's, it's more um, long-term work here. So, with the tranche one dollars, um, we are looking to make sure that there's capacity and resources within the unemployment system um, so that um, right now as unemployment insurance goes away that the work sources uh, centers and uh, the organizations that they work with have the support and so all workers can have access to uh, the, the training and the connections to, to jobs, but we're also looking to fund job training programs, rapid reskilling programs, and some of those uh, wrap, wraparound services like uh, pay to train type programs to help people make that transition and get back into work in addition to, to childcare too, which is such an important component of this. The, the last tiny slice here uh, out of the tranche one dollars is some um, I'm calling it strategic investment planning here. The, um, the majority of that is looking at a countywide broadband investment plan. Um, there's uh, there's a, a huge focus on broadband um, right now, and it's not just the, the ARPA dollars, but there's, there's a number of federal agencies that are interested in funding 
the development of broadband networks, uh, along with state agencies. You might know that Business Oregon has just stood up a, a broadband office. Um, and so we want to be prepared for that. And we've, um, we're have we working with partners to think about what this might look like. Uh, I know that um, uh, Colpac, the Economic Development District, which includes part of Western Washington County and, and some of the coastal, the Northwest counties, they're doing a, a broadband study right now, and, and we're really excited to see some of the results about that. But as we look at the potential funding, both out of ARPA and the state and the potential for the federal infrastructure plan, we wanna make sure that we are prepared um, both at the county and at the local level uh, for how we might go after and, and deploy some of those dollars for broadband. And so that's, that's something we're working on there. The, the, la the last bullet point there, technical analyses, uh, we do have a, a tiny, tiny, tiny slice um, to, uh, to put together any kind of studies or plans that uh, would help support everything else that you see here. So for example, around the revolving loan fund, uh, figuring out the financial sustainability piece there, what kind of model we might put, to put together. Is it a revolving loan fund? Is it a, a support for IDAs or other um, lending tools? <clears throat> just, a, just a small piece there. So that's this is uh, that's most of the update that I have for you. Um, I'll clear my uh, I'll drop the the screen share here in just a second. But these are the these are some of the questions that I have for you all today. Um, you know I, I I don't often get the chance to go out and just talk to business owners. I do it as much as I can. But we're all kind of living in this virtual world and. Um, so I'm, I'm excited to hear from you all about how your businesses are doing and what kind of support that you need and. Uh, what kind of support you might not be getting. So I'll just, I'll read these questions here and then um, then I'll, I'll drop my screen share here so we can have a little bit of a conversation. Um, but the four questions I have, and uh, you know, you know, please, if, if these are off the mark, if other things you wanna talk about, I'm happy to entertain that as well. But the first question is, are you receiving clear instructions on COVID-19 business regulations? So I know that uh, it has been so, so tough for small businesses to navigate um, the regulations um, around uh, COVID-19. And, um, and we've had some ups and downs, right? In uh, late July, I was uh, talking with uh, Deanna and some of the other business recovery leads about, well, gosh, are people even getting PPE anymore? Well, it's, you know, we, we had that, that grace period, right? Um, and we're like, well, gosh, maybe we don't need to be doing PPE distribution, that's fine. And then Delta hit. And you know, we spent the week after that uh, trying to make sure that you know the stockpile that um, the county has, uh, actually Clean Water Services has, was flowing to the business recovery centers, and then everybody had enough masks and um, all that other uh, stuff. So, um, so I want to hear about you know, is it is it clear kind of uh, what you should be doing, and and uh, and and. Uh, and then also that second question, do you have adequate access to PPE signage and other COVID-19 required resources? Um, it'd be helpful to hear. Um, the, the third, fourth question, uh, you see the obvious tie here with uh, the economic recovery work that I was talking about. So again, we're going starting a process to be thinking about a capital lending tool, uh, potentially a revolving loan fund or, or some other type of um, forgivable loan or something. And so I'm, I'm really keen to hear from you all about the type of uh, services that your business needs right now. Um, there's a lot of talk of the, of the new normal. No one really knows what that looks like. And it's actually probably gonna look like different things to different businesses. Um, you know, whether it's a hybrid uh, situation of having some workers that are able to be in the office part of the week, or whether it's, um, uh, a, you know, a, a, a hybrid e-commerce model where, you know, you're, you're um, changing the model from, uh, you know, 70% of brick and mortar sales to 50% online or something like that. So I'm interested to hear about the kind of um, services and support that your business needs in this uh, time of uncertainty and change. And then also to that capital piece there, you know, what, what kind of capital, um, uh, what kind of capital you, you're, you'd be interested in and, and how those <laughs> dollars might be used. Um, bless you. Um, so I've, uh, you know, on that note, um, you know, there's a number of different ways to put together loan programs. They can use be used for a number of different things. Um, you know, I have heard from businesses that, you know, maybe it's a piece of equipment or maybe it's uh, a, a, a boost of cash to help hire new workers. Um, so, so interested not just in 
um, you know, whether, whether you're looking to take on a loan, but how you might use those funds, that would be really helpful to hear. Um, and then, you know, the final, final question here is, uh, is around the broadband uh, work, uh, of course, is, um, you know, what are your business internet connection needs and are they adequately served? Um, broadband's a, it's a, it's a really interesting conversation and um, I'm not uh, too technically savvy, but uh, trying to get up to speed on, on all of the, um, the details on broadband. Um, a lot of the focus on broadband is on residential connections and, uh, and that's great um, and that's needed. Uh, I do wanna be, make sure that we're not losing focus on business needs as well. So, you know, there is um, the kind of uh, easy example of thinking about, well, you have an office of people and they all have computers and so they all need a uh, good bandwidth and a good connection. Uh, but increasingly, I'm hearing about uh, really novel um, uh, in, uh, ideas that are um, becoming part of the normal uh, business world. So uh, agriculture keeps popping up about we actually need to be thinking about uh, investments in broadband across our rural areas uh, because um, uh, the agricultural um, uh, IT systems are becoming sophisticated um, uh, enough to, you know, with drones and, and tractors and all sorts of monitoring equipment that uh, for agriculture to move into the next um, phase, we really need to be thoughtful about that. So we'd we'll be interested to hear about your business's internet connection needs. So, so that's that. He, here's uh, one last slide here. Uh, if you don't have, there's my silly face. If you don't have um, my contact information, you can do a screen grab or something of, of that right there. Happy to, you know, I'll, I'll drop it in the chat here as well. So I uh, would be happy to connect with uh, you all uh, offline uh, to talk about your business anytime. So anytime we can, we can fit it in with our busy schedule. So, all right, well, I'm gonna stop sharing then. Um, and uh, if we could uh, go ahead, love to, love to hear from you all. And maybe somebody wants to be the first one to jump in. And um, maybe something I said in the presentation caught your, caught your attention, or you have a question, or you would like to answer one of the questions that I presented. Yeah, Heidi, yes, go ahead. Thank you. Heidi, Hi. and, Heidi and then Bob and Joanne. Okay. Yeah, thanks so much. Um, can you hear me okay? Yes. Great. Um, you know, I am a very small team uh, running our somewhat uh, large uh, athletic club. And um, I think the athletic club's fitness industry kind of has its own um, concerns, but they sh are shared very much with the service industry as a whole. And I think mm -hmm. I was actually dreaming at bedtime last night of something. I wish this existed and you're making me wonder if maybe it does and I'm just not aware of it. The hardest thing is to feel um, equipped to continually navigate policy setting, um, particularly around safe in-person uh, activity in a service industry business. The masking issue is a really big one. Um, you know, in the past, it, uh, governor orders, government orders at least provided clarity and we went very high um, rule and high mm -hmm. endorsement of that. The current uh, state of Oregon order for mask wearing allows exceptions when mask mm -hmm. wearing is not practical. So for example, you're a parent, I'm a parent, um, my mm -hmm. kids playing soccer right now and those mm -hmm. kids, right. parents are allowed to choose whether or not their kids are masked when they're smashing into mm -hmm. each other on the soccer field, mm -hmm. um, which is allowed. And so it, it, that kind of leaves it up to little old me um, to set wise policy in our health club for when people are cycling and sweating and pushing. Um, and there's just that, because it's open, there's just that increase. Everybody's exhausted and everybody's getting mm -hmm. tense against each other, right? Mm -hmm. And you hear these stories of, um, thank goodness we have a wonderful community on a whole, and then we have some leaders who are really able to buffer most of the community from, you know, the, when people get angry. Um, and mm -hmm. we haven't had some of those situations that you hear about, um, but we hear them a lot in others of, you know, restaurant workers who are called names or grocery store people who just have people screaming at them mm -hmm. or refusing mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. So um, what... 
One of the challenges I'm experiencing is just people not actually understanding how COVID is spread because mm -hmm. the information is so murky out there um, mm. and politicized and, and a, a changing because it's evolved. It's a public health issue. We're always going to be refining and it, Delta was different than what we knew originally, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So I was dreaming of an employee training <laughs> that would just, you know, say whatever you believe outside or whatever's going on in the world, this is what our company is going to address as the best mm -hmm. understanding of how COVID is spread currently and how that needs to translate into the way we physically distance ourselves, wear mm -hmm. a well-fitting, high-quality mask, um, when we can remove that mask, what behaviors we need to do to keep ourselves and others safe, uh, et cetera, to get people kind of grounded in a shared philosophy of what we're doing and not so like able to troubleshoot in yep. a moment of what do I do now? So yep. I kind of have, if I had an employee training or had someone to help me with an employee training, I would start with that, just kind of base it in fact, what's our, um, what's our scientific understanding right now? How does that translate into our policies for in-person activities mm -hmm. in terms mm -hmm. of masking, physical distance, et cetera. And then just a little piece about like, how do you care for yourself when uh, somebody's being angry or refusing yeah. to comply or customers fighting with each other yeah. um, and that yeah. kind of piece. Does something like that exist? Sorry, that was long, but um, yeah. I think a lot of business people are getting that fatigue. Yeah, yeah. No, thanks for that, uh, Heidi. Um, uh, you know, what, I guess my, my first uh, thought here uh, in response to your question about training um, for, uh, for COVID-19 um, facts and uh, how businesses uh, and their workers can can manage through some of these really difficult situations is to uh, is to reach out to um, our partners here in the HHS department at the county. Um, I think that they have a whole variety of resources, and um, I would imagine that on their website they have a number of resources um, that have some COVID uh, facts. Of course, a great resource is the CDC website for yeah. for some of those things as well. Um, you are making me um, think about this. This could be an opp opportunity, um, and, and Deanna, we should we should talk about this here too. Is the um, the business recovery centers have had a series of trainings on on all sorts of things, um, and I think it, you're highlighting a, a need right now for uh, for an additional training, and so. I don't know if HHS has done this sort of thing, but it seems like there's a, there's a connection point between the work that our public health folks are doing in HHS and the business recovery centers. And it sounds like a, a really awesome workshop that, that we could put on, so. Okay, mm -hmm. so yeah. contact HHS. Like I, we do, we use that, um, we use the CDC website. We have mm -hmm. a great relationship with OHA and OS, OSHA. So we great. pick up the phone, mm -hmm. we call people, we consult. But it's just it's it is a lot to try and yep. try and put together a training and pay all those employees come in for a training and mm -hmm. um, you know it's just when you're so small and strapped already it's like if something were out there um, that offered that I think that would be a, a super wonderful uh, resource. Great. Thank well, you. let's see if it let's see if it exists first. Let's see if those resources are out there, and then um, if not, I think. Um, that would be an opportunity to look at the, the BRCs uh, to potentially do a, a virtual event or something that, and all of those virtual events that the BRCs have been putting on have, have been recorded and put up on YouTube. And so if, if your employees couldn't make it, there would be an opportunity for them to check in on that later. So Deanna, did you have a follow-up on that? I saw your hand go up. Well, I just was going to say, Marnie has been great about, right. you know, pulling together um, her team um, at the County Health um, and Human Services Department uh, as the director and helping us move, um, you know, education training opportunities together. So we, I'm happy to reach out to her and, and Heidi, I'll probably reach out to you as well and have you help us design what that would look like. Great. Great. Thank you. Um, Bob and Joanne, I see your hand up. Okay, thank you, Matt. Um, also, thank you for your presentation so far. Uh, I'm a local uh, SCORE business mentor, and 
of a lot of our county uh, currently isn't really being interfaced or served that I'm finding. In other words, Hispanics and women startups and mm. part about women startups nationwide and in Oregon, women are starting up more businesses than men. I have good margin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you're, you know, somewhat uh, different than years past. As a result, you know, the county doing some direct interface uh, networking with them. Yeah, great. Good question, Bob. Thank you um, for that. Um, yes, we are trying to be um, uh, thoughtful to the needs of small businesses and entrepreneurs. Um, and uh, we do want one of the actually one of the business recovery centers we uh, in, in Western Washington County is uh, with Adelante Mujeres and the Chamber of Commerce out of Forest Grove. And uh, I do know that Adelante has uh, deep connections uh, into the Latinx um, uh, community and uh, and as to their mission uh, also with women entrepreneurs uh, specifically. Um, one thing that we're working on now, um, which aligns with what you're talking about specifically is we um, do have um, uh, a, a grant opportunity that we have put out. We're actually reviewing uh, submissions right now to fund uh, other organizations, uh, to, to fund community-based organizations uh, to help with economic recovery um, in underserved communities. So in communities that, um, that lack access or traditionally have not had access to uh, some of the technical assistance and access to capital that I talked about previously. And so we, I can't reveal who those organizations are uh, yet um, because we're still going through the process of, of reviewing them. Um, but we did go through that process with a strong focus on uh, centering racial equity and trying to be thoughtful about um, different uh, cultural groups uh, across the county. Um, and so uh, looking forward to releasing that very soon. Um, very excited about the submissions that we've received. Um, and I think this is this is central to um, thinking about uh, an equitable economic recovery and an equitable economic development program is a recognition of the uh, the disparities that we have uh, in our local economy um, and uh, trying to confront those disparities through tailored programs. So, so looking forward to releasing that information to you all uh, very soon. Matt, another question, if I might. Uh, uh, Centro Cultural de Washington County uh, is a fairly significant you know, center for many outreach things. I would suggest if you're not already have putting that on the list of uh, groups to contact, please make sure that uh, it's a very active group, very well done. So you know, in my estimate, so that that is mostly it. I think you've answered my third question, but do you have industry segments? when considering uh, considering doling out loans and grants, for instance, you know, retail, high tech, women, et cetera, just the same general segments. Yeah, yeah, so um, first response, I, I, you know, I, I know Jonathan uh, and uh, he and I uh, connect, uh, Jonathan, the, the director of Centro de Prosperidad there at Centro Cultural. Uh, they are a terrific organization, aren't they? And we are uh, looking for more opportunities to, um, to work with them and, and other um, CBOs uh, across Washington County. Um, uh, to, uh, to your next question about industry clusters, um, uh, yeah, yes, definitely. Um, you know, with the CARES Act, the county and local cities put together a number of different programs that were specifically tailored to those uh, industry clusters most, um, most impacted by uh, the economic downturn. So uh, like uh, Heidi's talking about all the in-person businesses where, um, um, you know, if you're going to go to an exercise class, at a, you know, you have to be there in person or um, restaurants, of course, leisure and hospitality. We are uh, with this economic stabilization fund, with this thinking about a capital lending tool, um, we want to be thoughtful about that as well. Um, we, we, the decision about uh, if it, it is completely tailored or if we put out a couple different 
um, uh, lending uh, products that are that are kind of tailored in different ways. That decision hasn't been made yet. Again, uh, I'd like to go through a process uh, with local businesses and with our partners to be thinking about how we might um, target these funds um, specifically. But thinking about um, who are the hardest hit um, and uh, is definitely something um, we, we will be paying attention to in that process. Thank you very much. And I'll shoot you uh, an email to your office to you know, ask maybe a few more questions so I don't dominate this section. Thank you. <laughs> Happy to talk offline, Bob. Thank you. Yeah. Brad, I think you had your hand up next. Yeah, so I have a as usual, multiple comments. Um, one thing for the, you know, we are in the workforce housing industry of providing mm -hmm. workforce housing. And I think that gets overlooked a lot as a, a legitimate industry and be a industry that has a large influx or, or uh, influence on work, the workforce issue in general. You know, mm -hmm. if people can't afford to live or they can't find affordable housing, what good is it to have a job here, you know? Um, so mm -hmm. I, I, I wonder if there's some way to tie that together, if the, you know, grant systems uh, or procedures for people that are trying to get new job training um, mm -hmm. to get some sort of rent help while they're going through the training, um, because mm -hmm. it's hard to leave a job to go get training. And it's also hard to get training while you're on the job. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So I don't know if there's some way for that to be looked at. Um, the other thing that I was thinking about is, is there any way for, because we have commercial properties as well, um, yeah. is there any way for some sort of grant program, um, maybe through uh, Earth Advantage and that kind of program for upgrading HVAC systems for commercial tenants and or house homes? Um, because uh, you know they, a lot of the stuff that they push for schools is you need to have so many air turns per hour to be healthy. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah. if you're a restaurant, <clears throat> you know, in an old building in downtown Hillsboro, you don't own the building you're renting and your landlord says, no, I'm not, I'm not upgrading that HVAC system because it's going to cost me $38,000. Yeah. Um, yeah. Those are, those are, those are health issues um, that there's no, you know, is there some sort of no interest loan you could do for, for property owners or some way to mm -hmm. get a program going for that? Um, mm -hmm. And then my third comment was, internet for you had talked about agriculture um we have some friends yes. that own a business out in the shoals area they're, they're a farm store uh, i know they have satellite um mm -hmm. for for internet and i think it's not as much of a problem now but you know you live you live in town you have multiple options you know if your service provider mm -hmm. is terrible you can just go to the next one and and it also forces them to be competitive as far as pricing for bandwidth uh, mm -hmm. But these outlying areas have one option, yeah. um, you know, and I don't know, it's not like you can run lines to shoals and to banks and to all these outlying areas very easily, but I don't know if there's some way to, to get some sort of program going for that as well. So yeah, just my, yeah. those are my thoughts. So. Yeah, good questions. Um, and I'll, I'll, I'll take those uh, in reverse. Um, so starting with the broadband uh, piece, um, uh, I, I had mentioned uh, Coal Pack, um, the economic development district that includes um, part, a portion of Western Washington County and the counties uh, to the northwest of us. Um, in, in Western Washington the County is specifically looking at rural broadband uh, connections. And so that's what you've identified that their primary question is, how do we um, get some of these uh, dark fiber middle mile lines out to places like Banks and Gaston and others um, so that we can, we can connect all of the dots of uh, not just um, the, the incorporated cities out there, but also to some of the rural uh, businesses and, and residential um, locations. So that's that's something that we're thinking about there. And then that's also a question that is going to be part of this broadband investment plan that I had talked about um, is how might we consider broadband connections across um, the county? And uh, you're right, it's there are major differences if whether you're in uh, Hillsborough or unincorporated Washington County or Shorewood or somewhere else in terms of the number of ISPs that you have and the connection speeds. And even the type of um, broadband as well, I think I think that's not to be overlooked. Um, you know, DSL is antiquated. Um, I think most of us are on coax cable, which is um, okay until everybody decides to watch Netflix at the same time. 
Um, fiber, um, you know, fiber is the way of the future. There's a number of different ways to do fiber. So if we are to continue to position Washington County to be a, um, a competitive uh, high-tech hub uh, where uh, folks might be in their home and, and run, run, you know, run a business. I have a, a friend that um, he's an artist and he's been um, like making like a uh, face, like World of Warcraft uh, characters out of his home. That's his business is designing characters that go into video games. And so they have a business connection to their house and he's able to kind of do all of that high bandwidth work. But we, there's going to be more of that. So how are we setting up to future proof uh, our, our community uh, so we can, we can continue to be economically um, competitive? Um, to your second question, uh, grant program, you had mentioned Earth Advantage and, and upgrading um, HVACs. Uh, I think that's great. And I think that's the kind of thing, Brad, that we definitely want to be thinking about with uh, Tranche 2 funding of and, and what, I, what I heard in your, in your statement was both um, a need right now to be thinking about the, the air turns uh, so that there's, there's fresh air and um, uh, pathogens aren't, aren't floating around or sitting around. But also I think that there's a, there's a climate piece here uh, as well about um, um, aging um, HVAC systems that aren't as efficient as they could be. Um, and how important that's gonna be for um, greenhouse gas reduction. Um, I do know that a number of cities, Hillsborough included, have uh, storefront grant um, uh, programs or tenant improvement grant uh, programs. Um, I, you know, I think uh, some other cities have some of those programs. But, but as we look at uh, that trunch too, I think um, that's the kind of transformative idea to think about, well, what are the legacy systems um, here that uh, are not resilient and are inefficient that we might um, tackle so that we uh, are moving into uh, a climate neutral space and we're better prepared for um, all of the extreme weather and the loads that that puts on the electric system. And then we also have uh, healthier places as well. So healthier, uh, healthier air in, in, uh, in our uh, common places. Um, your first comment was about training on the job. Um, that's definitely something that we're looking at in a variety of ways. Um, uh, so thinking about wraparound um, support, so the kind of pay to train so that people can uh, can can pay their rent and um, uh, and and put food on the table while they're training for their next position. I think a type of program like that is is well and appropriate right now as we're in this weird transition period and and people don't don't have um, you know the the kind of extra disposable um, uh, income on the side to to be able to do that on their own. Um, so, so definitely think about that and, and in the construction industry specifically too, I think, um, uh, we, we would love to, uh, continue to think about, um, how we're supporting the trades. Um, uh, you know, I know, I know that Washington County is, um, um, um thinking about joining the, the C2P2 program, which is a Metro run program, um, that is, uh, focused on increasing participation by women and minorities in the trades. Um, so, so I think there's, there's a number of different avenues there that we can be looking at. So, so thanks for that. Okay, I see another hand up here. Is it Jelan? Jelana? Jelana. Jelana, sorry about that. Okay. Go ahead. Um, regarding loans and financing, is there programs designed or specifically a business going towards a wholesale market. And the reason I'm asking is because it's such a leap in need of capital. Um, I'll be coming from an e-commerce base. Yeah. Bakery, but we do get a lot of large orders. Um, we have some attention from grocery stores, but if we do make that pitch, I don't know if we'll have that capital to transition into a space that can meet their needs. And I know that's one of the biggest requirements of your pitch is, are you ready to you know, provide a large number of units? We could for a good six months where we're at, but um, I'm also a woman, a black woman. So if there's anything out there, cause I am running to a lot of great, options, um, especially through Meso, but 
a lot of them are geared for you want to move into a food truck or you want just a small brick mm -hmm. and mortar. I'm looking for something more conditioned like a small warehouse. I would still like to have a storefront, but I'm mm -hmm. looking for financing or loans geared, investments geared for going into the wholesale retail market. And maybe they're not being promoted because it's such a defined niche. Uh, great question, Jelana. Thank you. Um, I, I think that's definitely something that we want to be considering here with the economic stabilization fund um, that I had been talking about is um, how are we able to reach uh, a variety of businesses at a variety of scales? And I think that I think that you're highlighting um, such a um, an important point in the life cycle of the business is, you know, you talk about how you're in some grocery stores, but to make that that scale leap to, to expand just a little bit more, you need that kind of bump to, to get over over that. And I think that um, that it's really important that we be thinking about that at the county is how we're supporting local businesses to make make that extra jump. Um, I'd love to talk to you offline and specifically about, um, you know, kind of the what that capital need looks like and and um, I think, are you talking about kind of uh, placing larger uh, uh, orders around kind of the, the supplies that you need, but then also leasing a larger space, probably? Is that uh, the, how the capital would be used and kind of getting getting the, the resources that you need to, to put together the new uh, order and then also leasing an expanded space? Yes. Um, yeah. In fact, the chambers and the city of Hillsborough are doing a great job helping me. So I am mm -hmm. finding the space options. It's just with my business plan showing that I want to divide operations through wholesale and retail. I'm mm -hmm. finding some other consultants that were helping me look for loans like through Meso. It's like, oh, mm -hmm. if you want to look for one or the other. And I'm like, I think I have a good thing going when you can kind of create a multiple revenue stream mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So maybe there's ones geared out there where it could help me with even if it's just the wholesale end and then i handle financing for the retail side but i just great great well please uh you know jelana please shoot me an email um uh, I, i'd love to be in touch and hear more about um your business and then um, I want to make sure that that you're all uh, able to participate in this process that we're going to go through here this fall to be thinking about um, a revolving loan fund. Um, I, I do think what I would like to see with this um, revolving loan fund or this economic stabilization fund, as we're calling it, is an opportunity for a number of different products. Uh, you know, I understand that there's a no one size fits all here. Um, and, and so, uh, Jelana, you're hitting on just, you know, this uh, kind of specific um, need, you know, there, there are kind of smaller businesses that might do the food trucks thing, but how are we thinking about the scaling thing at the same time? So this is, this is really helpful input. Thank you. Thank I'll you. email you later. Great. Great. So Matt, um, we are getting, we're getting down there. I, um, it went very quickly. Um, and actually my stomach started to growl when Jelana was talking <laughs> about her bakery. So Jelana, thank you for that. Um, one question I have for you as I was uh, coming to work this morning, I was listening to OPB and they were talking about the fact that large employers are heading to the, to the White House today to have a conversation with President Biden about the potential of, you know, the hundred or more employers, um, in, in, the companies with with 100 or more employees that we're, are going to require mandated vaccination mm -hmm. and the impact that that's going to have and potentially on you know um, employees that are not interested in being mandated into those kinds mm -hmm. of things um, going to smaller companies um, mm -hmm. have you thought about sort of is there and in, in Washington County it's very interesting we have the largest em, private sector employer obviously in our mm -hmm. backyard as well mm -hmm. as you know 85% small businesses. Have you thought about sort of how that might be impactful in terms of workforce development and a shift that we might see? Mm -hmm. Deanna, I knew that you weren't going to let me off without uh, without a good good hard question at the end of this thing. So, <laughs> so thank you for that. <laughs> no, that's great. That's great. Um, yeah, you know, I, I, I've been, I think, reading the same headlines as you. Um, and um, 
yeah, I mean, I think I think it's something that we need to be paying attention to. And again, it's it's something that uh, that you know I have to turn this question back to all the businesses, and I do want to hear from some of our larger employers about how they anticipate um, that's going to uh, to impact um, uh, their their employees if if some uh, employees um, uh, would would leave for that for that point. I did hear somewhere that um, we are in such a transition period right now, and there's there's a lot of um, folks changing seats, moving jobs all across the board. It is uh, quite the game of musical chairs that's happening kind of all up and down uh, different scales of businesses. Um, and so, and this gets to one of the, the tough parts about workforce development right now is that there's just, um, there's a lot going on. There's a lot of uncertainty. Um, and so, uh, again, I think the package that we're putting together here on workforce development with the tranche one dollars is um, it, it is a, a still, again, in this kind of response phase of how can we start to tee up and seed some of the um, uh, you know, rapid retraining programs and how do we make sure that, sure that the resources and capital are there uh, in the near term uh, while we're still in the thick of it. But you're highlighting uh, one of the questions that we should be asking with the tranche one dollars is how can we be strategic to make sure that there's um, a strong pipeline system within Washington County so that um, no matter kind of wh what is what is causing uh, employees to leave one uh, company and go to the other that companies can be sure that there are other employees there that can backfill those positions. Um, and so, you know, where where I go with that and what I'm interested in is what are the partnerships that we can set up with um, organizations like uh, PCC and Centro and the work systems and the chambers uh, to make sure that that uh, pipeline is there and we uh, it's uh, and it's strong. So, uh, you know, workforce, you know, talking with, um, uh, you know, some of our high tech partners, uh, they say that, you know, uh, having a great workforce is one of the number one reasons why they're here. And so uh, it's, it's the kind of thing that we can't, uh, even though maybe we can pat ourselves on the back and say, that's great. They're so excited that we have a great workforce. We have to keep an eye on it and we have to um, continually um, focus on supporting it, so. Totally agree with you. I, I think it's one of those renewable resources, right? Um, and that we have to continually figure out ways to um, ensure that our education system is matching um, the work, you know, the workforce and the need from business and labor. Um, so excellent conversation this morning, Matt. Thank you so much for participating and being a part of it. I want to thank Heidi as well, again, for your support at Hawthorne Farm Athletic Club of our Small Business Solution Series workshop. Thank you all for taking time out of your day to spend with us. Have a great rest of your week.